Hello everyone, in this video I'll be showing you the most OP sword bard build guide from Baldur's Gate 3. This is absolutely crazy, I'm going to go over all the gear that you need for this and how to play this character. So we're going to start off actually as a fighter, I know that sounds funny, but we get constitution saving throws, which is actually going to be very powerful for us and something that we definitely want. And for our fighting style, since we get a fighting style from the sword bard, we're going to want to take defense to give us a plus one to armor class, that's just straight up powerful to have. Now. For our stats, we want to have our Charisma maxed up as much as we can possibly get it, so get that up to 17. Our Constitution is going to be our second most important stat. We're going to dump Dexterity because you can grab yourselves the Gloves of Dexterity, which make this so much easier because this is multi-attribute dependent. And we're going to also want to have a bit of Intelligence too, so you can take down your other stats, make them roughly like that. We're going to have Constitution evened out at 16. We're going to have our Intelligence at 15 and then Charisma at 17. Now, what makes this build so powerful is the fact that we're going to be able to control all enemies on the battlefield, so you will not be getting hit. And that's just crazy. So, we're going to start off here. I'm using the Infernal Rapier because this gives us a... Uh, our attack roll is going to scale off of our Charisma modifier, which is very powerful. I also like the Armor of Agility here. So, even without anything added up, we already have an Armor Class of 23, so that's fantastic. But as we go through the level ups, we only take one level of fighter. That is, again, just for the constitution saving, th or proficiency in constitution saving throws. So we will not break our concentration on our spells. Because the bard is really about control, and having control spells is kind of important as a bard. So we're going to go with Vicious Mockery for our cantrip. Minor Illusion S tier cantrip. This can allow you to steal from enemies as well as group them together for other players to drop fireballs on. And for our. We're going to take Healing Word, bonus action, it'll help if any of your teammates go down and you can't run over to them and waste an action, you can use a bonus action to bring them back up. Dissonant Whispers will give Frightened on a creature, uh, Tasha's Hideous Laughter just a good control spell as well, and you can also take something like Sleep or Thunder Wave, those are other two great options. Pick whatever instrument you find best, and then for skill proficiencies, I like a Sleight of Hand is just useful outside of combat, so we're going to go with that. But uh, yeah, you also get the Song of Rest here from the Bard. What makes this build so powerful is we're going to be able to attack and cast spells on the same turn. And I'm going to show you how. So next level spell, uh, you can take really whatever. It doesn't matter a whole lot at our first level. Thunder Wave, maybe just if you can get someone to push back, that's always nice. Um, so that'll be that for our first two levels of Bard. At level three, this is when we get to choose our subclass. And we're going with the College of Swords. This gives us a fighting style and the flourishes which is a big part of this build so you'll start off usually with defensive flourishes so this will increase your armor class and then you're going to follow up with these uh slashing flourishes which allow you to attack two enemies at once using bardic inspiration you can also shoot two enemies at once with your bow so this is extremely powerful and i want to show you how this can impact this build uh you don't have to start off with defensive flourish some people say it's powerful some people don't like it but uh in terms of our spells, we're going to go with Hold Person. This is very powerful, and we're going to get to a point where we can hold six people still and not even have to worry about them, so we're going to go with that one there. Uh, Heat Metal can be a decent enough spell early on as well, uh, and Thrall is not as good as some of the other options. For our fighting style, we're going to go with two weapon fighting, so when you make an attack with your offhand weapon, you can add your ability modifier to the uh, damage of the attack. So it's very powerful because we're going to be using two swords here and I'll show you the reason why and what swords to use. So once we get to level four, we get our feet and for our cantrip, if you're the face of the party, take friends. This is super important to have. Mage hand can be another nice one just to set up outside of combat and then maybe throw water bottles or healing potions for your team. For our next level two spell, um, level two spells aren't super important. Enhance ability can be decent if you are the face of your party or you need just that help there. We're going to take Heat Metal, though, because this is a great concentration just to uh, give disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. can be very useful later on. And then for our feet, we're going to go with Dual Wielder. So you can dual wield two weapons that aren't light, and that's how we're able to use the Infernal Rapier here. And I'm going to be using the Belm Sword as well. Belm's really powerful, and I'm going to get into why, because it can use our Charisma modifier for its damage alongside the Infernal Rapier. So... We're going to take Dual Wielder. This also gives you a plus one to your armor class. Uh, so that's going to take our armor class up to a nice cool 24, which is just incredible considering we don't have to put a whole lot into it. For our level three spells, this is where we get actually some really great ones. Uh, Fear, I am a big fan of, but we're going to go with Glyph of Warding. Reason being, this allows you to 
set up any type of damage. It's kind of like Fireball. But also you can do Glyph of Warding Sleep, and it'll put a bunch of enemies to sleep. So this is highly underrated as a spell. And then we also get our Fawns of Inspiration, which gives us our Bardic Inspiration back at short and long rest. And also the Bardic Inspiration goes to 1d8. So that's nice, but take Glyph of Warding. Super underrated spell. Next for our spells, you can go with something like Hypnotize can be pretty decent, or Hypnotic Pattern, or Fear. Fear is nice because a target will drop their weapon and then have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, so that can be a very powerful one. Either of these two spells is one that you want to roll with, and we'll be able to cast these after attacking, so that's extremely powerful. Um, pick one of the two that you prefer, and I just like Fear there. So, at our next level bar, level 7, this is where we get another spell slot, and we get one of the best spells in the game for control with Confusion. This confuse a group of enemies, causing them to attack at random, wander around aimlessly, and occasionally skip their turns in the stupor. What's nice about this, it's like Fireball, so you got a large area of effect, but also you can upcast it for a larger area, and it basically turns everyone useless for three turns, so that is really nice. We want to take that for sure. And then we also get ourselves um, the ability to swap out spells if you want to take something different as you're leveling. For our next level 4 spell, Dimension Door can be a good one because this allows you to move around with allies. Um, that can be quite powerful. Bestow Curse is okay, but uh, yeah, I, I do think at this level, Greater Invisibility or Dimension Door would be your two best options. Um, you can also go with something like Hypnotic Pattern if you would like. Uh, as we're going to be able to cast these with the Mystic Scoundrel Band. So we also get ourselves another feat here. And this is where we're going to pump up our Charisma. If you have the Hag's Hair, it'll take that up to 20. And then if you have the uh, Mirror of Lost, that can take it up to 22. And then if you wear the Birthright Hat, that can take that up to 24. So this is not my tab, but we're just going to pretend that would be a 20 if we did this the way that I'm explaining it there. Now at level 9, Bard. We also get ourselves some more spells at level 5, and obviously hold monster. As I mentioned, we want to have lots of control here, because this means we can upcast this and it'll control two characters, or we can just do one. This can make some endgame fights very trivial, so we want to go with that. And then also hold person can be upcast to pause, or hold a bunch of people in place as well. Very underrated spell. And then once we get to level 10 bard, this is the best level of the bard because we get our magical secrets. For cantrip, go with whatever one that's not true strike. For our spell selection, dominate person can be a de decent enchantment or planar binding if you want to uh, attach your consciousness to a otherworldly being and take control of them. One of these two is great, so planar binding or dominate person. I think that planar binding is kind of the better one of the two. You're not going to be using as much as some of your other ones. Uh, for your skills, you can take Athletics and Acrobatics. I think those are the two best ones. Resist being shoved and helps you uh, just both help with resist being shoved. If you're a locksmith of your team, you can also go with the uh, Quick Hands there. But for our Magical Secrets, this is where things get quite interesting because I always take Conjure Elemental, but you're going to see why I don't take this as we take our next level. So um, Counter Spell can be a really great one. Stops a spell from being cast. If you already have a wizard or a sorcerer that has this, I would focus on other areas because this is, you know, that's their domain. But still, it's not a bad one to take. Haste is great, but I'd rather have a sorcerer be able to twin haste to have it on two people at once for this only one spell uh, being cast. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of great options here that you can go with. Command is actually a really powerful one uh, that I, I would recommend taking. And the reason why, this is only a level one spell, but this is a control spell, and we're able to cast this with the Mystic Band of the Scoundrel after attacking, making it a very useful one. Some other considerations, Spirit Guardians, just a great concentration overall for damage. Not for the purposes of what we're going to do, because we have other concentration spells that we want to use. Spiritual Weapons are another really great one. I'm a big fan of having extra people around to take hits for your team. Uh, but we're going to be able to get Conjure Elemental from another way. So, we're going to go with Counter Spell and Command. I know this is weird. You can also go with Fireball if you don't want to take Counterspell or Command, but I'll get into why those are really great in a moment. But that's going to be that for level 10 Bard. It's going to be quite an interesting build. And the reason that it gets so overpowered is you can hold everyone in place and just have your whole team go whack them around. Now, for our final level, we're actually going to add in one level of Wizard. Now, the reason being is we're able to do... Uh, we're able to scribe spells from the Wizard, cat, the wizard spell slots, and this gets pretty crazy. For our cantrips, 
Firebolt for utility or Bone Chill. And I'm a huge fan of Shocking Grass for lightning damage and cold damage. If you have someone setting up water, these will get doubled in damage. So they're the no-brainer takes. Now, for our spells, I like Magic Missile. We're not going to use it, but I like it. Conjuration or uh, Grease from the Conjurations, Decent, Fog Cloud. We're going to want to have Shield, though. Shield is the best level 1 spell that we can get here. So this is really great. Long Strider is kind of nice, too. Just increase movement speed, but... Uh, we're not going to be using a whole lot of these very often, so just go with... We just want to have shield. That's the most important one there. And make sure that we do have shield prepared. This is a level 1 reaction. Use a level 1 spell slot and uh, increase your armor class by 5, which is huge. It means that you'll be surviving through things that you normally wouldn't. And we'll go with something like that for our uh, spells. Now, as we get into the gear, this is what makes this build so powerful. So... For our weapons, we're going to be using the Infernal Rapier in our main hand. So this gives us a bonus, plus one to spell save DC. So this is going to help out with our control spells as well. Melee caster instead of a dexterity modifier. You add your spell casting ability modifier to attack rolls. So we're going to be using Charisma, which we're going to have at like 20, 22 or 24 at the end of the game. Also, you get the Planar Ally Cambion, which is just huge to have another summon, <laughs> have an ally you can summon in. This is really nice. So this gives us, gives us the Cambion there and... That's just something else to help out with fighting. So we have that 82 health. It's got its own attacks that are pretty great. But in terms of the offhand weapon, this is a very useful one, Belm. So this gives us perfectly balanced strike. And what's cool about this is it follows with the previous Baldur's Gate games. And you're able to, it'll take the, whatever you have on your main weapon, that's what's going to be on the Belm. So it'll use the Infernal Rapier's uh, Charisma modifier for its attack rolls. And uh, it's going to give you that plus one to spell save DC as well. It copies it. It doesn't say it there. But then also you get the perfectly balanced strike there, which will allow us to use a bonus action to attack. So that is pretty nice. Um, you can also use your offhand attack. But it will. What is nice about it is usually with the offhand weapons a little weaker. But this is going to copy your main hand. It actually gets really powerful. Now for uh, the rest of the gear, which makes this build crazy. Um, Band of the Mystic Scoundrel, Illusion Quickening. After hitting a creature with a weapon attack, you can cast an Illusion or Enchantment spell as a bonus action. So what's crazy about that is we have a lot of those. So um, you got um, Illusion or Enchantment. We got Fear, which is Illusion. Uh, Confusion is an Enchantment spell. Hypnotic Pattern. Command. <laughs> and... Uh, hold monster so all of our crowd control we're going to be able to do our two attacks because the sword bar gets two attacks so attack attack and then with your bonus action you can also use hold monster or uh i really like command and you can use like command grovel which will make the creature fall prone you can also do something like i i like command approach have everyone come towards you um and then you can upcast that so that it targets six people so this is crazy so that's funny, we hold out the loot there. You can attack people twice and then command and get six people to completely lose their turn. Or you can do uh, Hypnotic Pattern and look at the area of effect. That's like a massive fireball, even at level three. Um, I guess casting at higher doesn't, levels doesn't change the size of it. My bad, I thought it did. But um, yeah, you got the ability to <laughs> do a whole lot with this. So um, what's nice is you get the ability to attack and use your spells in the same turn. For the rest of our gear, we got 24 armor class. That's just ridiculous, but we're going to use the Helmet of Arcane Acuity, which whenever you deal damage with a weapon, you gain Arcane Acuity, which gives you an increased chance of landing your command spell. So, super powerful there. Cloak of the Wii just gives you a plus one to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, another thing that we definitely want. Armor of Agility gives us 70 armor class, plus our Dexterity modifier, and plus two to saving throws. And then also we're using Gloves of Dexterity just so that we can dump our Dexterity, have it at 18, and it's going to give us that increase for our armor class. So plus 4 to Dexterity, 17 for our armor. Evasive Shoes gives us a plus 1 Acrobatics and a plus 1 armor class. If you have better shoes you prefer, like if you like the movement shoes like Night Walkers or the Space Hunt boots, take those instead, but I just like the increased armor class. Amulet of the Devout, that's not what you have to go with, but this will give you a plus 2 to spell save DC. So you're getting a lot of spell save from all this gear. You can also go with something like the Amulet of Greater Health, which is going to take your health up to 136. So that can be nice too. But really, if you have someone else that could use it, I leave it on them because Gale's a little squishy, so he takes that. I like the Caustic Band just for an extra two to your acid damage. And then the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel, which I went over, is extremely overpowered. 
And then for our, we're gonna wanna have two hand crossbows on here. So we are able to, what we wanna do is we're gonna go with our slashing flourish um, attack. So this allows us to attack two people. And then we're gonna wanna use arrows of many targets. The reason we wanna use that is then our helmet here is gonna give us full stacks of arcane acuity. And then we're able to land every single spell. You're gonna have pretty much no one that resists these spells at the end of the game because of all the gear that we have is gonna be boosting it up. We have, we have that, our sword boosted, our, our offhand is going to get that boost. Um, that's going to give us a boost to our spell save DC. That gives us a boost. Pretty much all of our gear is going to make it so that no one can resist any of our attacks. This build is absolutely nuts. So in combat, you're just going to go up to people. Uh, you're going to use your bow to set up arcane acuity, or you're going to attack, and then you can command or use like confusion and confuse a huge group of people. So what's nice about this is you can attack, attack, set up crowd control, and then you also have the weapon to do bonus action attacks as well. So this build is broken, completely broken. So yeah, I just want to give this OP build guide for the Sword Bard in Baldur's Gate 3. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. And if you found this video useful, hit that subscribe button below. <laughs>